your furnace blows cold air, and your air conditioner doesn't. The water seems to go everywhere you don't want it to, and your kitchen and bath haven't been remodeled since the 50s. Well, welcome to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. Kansas City has depended on Dick Ray and Shawnee Mission Plumbing, Heating and Cooling to solve heating, cooling, plumbing, and remodeling problems for over 50 years. All you need to do is call 576-7798. And now the master plumber with a degree in mechanical engineering is here to help. Here's the potentate of pipes, the Earl of Electricity, the Emperor of Air, the Imperial Poobah of Plumbing, the Grand Toileteer, the Master Plumber, Dick Ray. And good morning. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber, and that would be me. And I'm here every Sunday from 11 to noon on KMBZ, and we talk about, oh, things around your house, uh, oh, the home improvement things, I guess, <laughs> actually what we talk about are the things that I do for a living every day. Uh, I work in people's homes and uh, fix broken air conditioners. Oh, my God, I'm doing a lot of that lately. Oh, man, it is hot this week. I've been, I've been talking too much, I think, about how nice the weather has been this summer and it hasn't been really hot. Well, eh, boy, that changed last week up in the 90s and, uh close to 100 degrees but it's good for business so i guess i shouldn't complain but i'm looking forward to this next week supposed to be getting back down into the 80s not so hot and hey i'm just like everybody else i mean i like the business created by the hot weather but you know enough is enough i am ready for fall anyway uh as i said you're you're listening to the home improvement hour with dick ray the master plumber i'm here every week and I'm, I'm going to start today's show with a topic, and <laughs> today's topic is a little bit different. This, but it's a good topic. It's something that it's about a product that is, I mean, this is one of the most wonderful products that I have discovered. I discovered it just because I'm a plumber, and, uh, and, oh, uh, I had a factory rep come in and give me one, and I put it in my own house 15 years ago and just basically fell in love with it. And and the sad part about it is that if he hadn't given it to me, I still wouldn't have one. And so I don't don't know. And I'm not under any illusions. Uh, You know, I've talked about this talked about this topic before in the past but just just a little bit because uh it's something that oh you know i th- i think you know oh dick you're so good at explaining things after you do a radio show on this product everybody's going to call you and want to buy one or want to be want to get one for their own home but i discovered in the past that eh, this evidently evidently this is one of those products where yeah you've really got to try it to become a believer but anyway it's it's a neat product so so here we go oh and and by the way um, after i get through talking about this we will of course as usual open up the phone lines actually i'm going to go ahead and open up the lines right now if you'd like to get in and ask me a question about uh, something that's going on at your house or a do-it-yourself product project that you've got going on going to go ahead and open up the phone lines if you call right now all of the lines are open you're guaranteed to get in later on in the show uh it gets pretty difficult to get an open phone line. But if you got a question, want to get in, now's the time to do it. And really, all you got to do is pick up the, pick up your phone, give us a call, 576-7798. Right now, you're guaranteed to get an open line. So give us a call, 576-7798. Well, anyway, here we go. (laughs) And I'm going to start by saying that, you know, Europeans... Uh, laugh at us Americans, probably for a lot of reasons, actually. But Europeans laugh at us Americans and call us uncouth and unclean because a bidet is not a normal fixture in our bathrooms. Uh, They call us unclean because of the way we attempt to clean ourselves after using the toilet with toilet paper. And you know what? After having had a bidet in my own bathroom at my house for the last 15 years, 
I got to agree with them. Wiping with toilet paper just doesn't get the job done. Uh, I never realized just how bad a job toilet paper did until I got a bidet, which cleans me with a warm water spray uh, after I use the toilet. You know, I, I, here's here's an example that, that, that made me a believer, actually a couple examples. You know, I always thought that the skid marks in my underwear were caused by me farting. Well, you know, made sense to me. Well, I tell you what, I've got news for you. Skid marks do not come from farting. Skid marks come when I try to clean myself as best I can using toilet paper, but it just don't quite get the job done. Skid marks in my underwear disappeared 15 years ago when I got my bidet and started cleaning my backside after I used the toilet with the warm water spray from the bidet rather than with toilet paper, which just never quite gets all of the waste removed. And I'll tell you another thing that disappeared 15 years ago when I got my bidet also. Now, this is something that all of us can identify because all of us at some point in our lives has come down with a really bad case of diarrhea. Uh, Happens to everybody. Uh, And when this happens, it seems like you spend most of your time on the toilet. And after a day or two of this, the inflammation caused by not getting cleaned very well with toilet paper can make it downright painful to walk as your inflamed cheeks rub together as you walk. I mean, it hurts. I, I don't have to tell you about that. We've all had this happen. It, it just is a lot of pain. Well, I'm not going to tell you that after I got my bidet, I no longer have diarrhea. That, of course, is it's not that good. I still have it from time to time, just like everybody else. But the pain, it's gone completely because my bidet does a good job of cleaning me off, which toilet paper just can't do. And that pain is from the inflammation caused by not getting clean when you have diarrhea. Well, all of this has made me a believer. Toilet paper just doesn't do a very good job of cleaning a person after they use the toilet. And the Europeans are just flat out right. We're slobs in this country when it comes (laughs) to this. Now, I don't sell a ton of bidets. Most folks don't know what they are and and what they do, and there's just not a big demand for them. But I'll tell you what, after having used one for the last 15 years, I'll guarantee I'll never be without one again. The last one that I sold and installed, which was about a month or two back, eh, it was like most of the ones that I've installed over the years. Uh, It was a result of pretty much a medical necessity. The the, uh, man was getting ready to have rotator cuff surgery on both shoulders. Oh, my God. And he was going to be unable to wipe himself with toilet paper after using the toilet. Uh, He had lived in Japan, and uh, he was familiar with and had used bidets in Japan. And he figured that it'd just be the perfect solution to eliminate having to wipe with toilet paper, which he wasn't going to be able to do anyway. And so that's what we did for him, installing the bidet in his home before his surgery. Now, actually, most homes don't have the room in the bathroom uh, to install a traditional European bidet, which uh, a bidet is a standalone fixture about the size of a toilet, usually mounted on the floor right next to the toilet. And our baths in this country just aren't designed to have that extra fixture. Uh, there's not enough room, the bathroom's not plumb for it, but there's a way that we can convert your ordinary toilet so that it will perform the same functions as a bidet. And that's actually what I have in my own home, and it's what we installed in the home of this man that was getting ready to have rotator cuff surgery. And it's, it's not really too tough to make the needed conversion. The conversion is made by removing your old toilet seat and and you just replace the old toilet seat with a new bidet type toilet seat and the bidet seat i mean it looks pretty much like your regular toilet seat but with some special features Uh, there are several different models uh, but the one i like the best has a handheld remote control and, and it looks pretty much like the handheld remote that you have for your tv set uh, 
you, you just sit on the seat like you did with your old toilet seat, and after you're through using the toilet, instead of wiping with toilet paper, you push a button on the remote control, which starts a warm water spray spraying on your backside to wash you off. Uh, there's another button on the remote for the ladies, which sprays you from the front. And with that remote, you can also make a lot of adjustments, things like the water temperature and pressure, so you can adjust it to your liking. And, and this is really great. The seat is heated, and the temperature of the seat is adjustable, so no more sitting down on a, on a cold toilet seat. And water for the, from, for the bidet comes from a T that's installed in the water supply line to the toilet, which is pretty easy to install. And the seat uh, does not, uh, it, the seat does need to plug into an electrical outlet. And that, that electrical outlet needs to be GFI protected outlet, which all outlets in bathrooms and newer homes these d days are. And even if you're in an older bathroom, it's not terribly difficult to convert a, an outlet from a regular outlet to be a GFI outlet. You just have to change the receptacle. Anyway, it's just a neat, neat product. And <laughs> most persons have no familiarity with it at all. If you ever lived with one for any time at all, I'm convinced that, like me, you'll always have one. And if you want to see what one looks like, come by my showroom sometime. I've got one in my showroom there, and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like and how it operates and everything like that. Anyway, that's about it. I, you know, I just, this product is so wonderful, and yet I know that, People are not going to rush to the phone and call me and say, hey, Dick, how do I get one of those things? It's one of those things that I, I think you just have to experience it to, uh, to, to appreciate what it does. And anyway, if you have any questions about bidet toilet seats or how they work or how they're installed, phone lines are now open. So give me a call right now if you have any questions. Or, of course, if you have any questions about really anything else, call me. Or maybe you've got a question about something else mechanical in your home. Your air conditioner, maybe. That's an important appliance these days. Or uh, maybe you've got a do-it-yourself project you'd like to have a little bit of help with, and I'll be glad to talk about that too, of course. And keep in mind, you know, I do the things that I talk about on this show, and I do them every day for a living and have for years and years. Uh, and that would include fixing and replacing broken air conditioners, a lot of that this time of year. Uh, and fixing and replacing broken furnaces and heat pumps. Furnace season's coming up pretty quick here. Plumbing repairs as well as replacement of leaky showers and stuff like that. So if I can pass on any information to you that'll help, I'm more than glad to do it. And at this point, really, all you got to do is pick up your phone right this minute. Give me a call, the number 576-7798. If you call right now, you're guaranteed to get in because we've still got a couple of open lines. So once again, give me a call, 576-7798. Now, I'm going to, you know, I, I told the people in my office about this show that I was going to do, and I I read it to them, you know, and and what I was going to talk about and everything, and it just cracked them up, you know. They, they're saying, you can't talk about stuff like that on the radio, can you? I thought that, but you know one thing that I have learned, because I've told people in my office about this, and I told a few other people what I was getting ready to talk about, and it, this is and and I had two people in my office, and I'm not a huge office, you know. And two people in my office said, you know, I've got another person that, that I know that this would be perfect for, either a close family member or a... Uh, or a, or a close friend uh, one of the people in my office says you know this would be ideal for somebody that is you know pretty overweight and I'm talking like 3 or 400 pounds uh, and one of the one of the guys in the office said you know I got a friend he's really overweight 3 or 400 pounds and he is unable he uh, he just can't reach around with his arm to wipe and so this would be perfect for him because what my friend is doing right now is he when he gets through using the 
the toilet, he goes over and sits on the edge of the tub. He's got a hand spray on his shower. He adjusts the temperature to the nice right temperature, and he sprays his backside off with the hand spray. So, and and uh, and then another person in the office says, "Yeah, I've got, I've got a friend, same exact problem." So, so anyway, if there's something that I just completely didn't even know about. So, anyway. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back to the phones. Transmitting now. This is KMBZ. KMBZ. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber at Shawnee Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. You know, people have told me for years that they feel I'm wasting my education by being a plumber. I studied at K-State where I was in the Mechanical Engineering Honors Program and graduated cum laude with a degree in Mechanical Engineering. And after graduating, I completed all of the coursework for a master's degree in Mechanical Engineering. Yes, that's why some people might think I'm just an overeducated plumber wasting my education. But you know, I don't feel that way at all, and I never have. What I think I am is a guy who's in business who has a lot better understanding of the physical and mechanical principles involved in the plumbing and air conditioning business than my competitors do. Let's me be a lot better at what I do than the competition. What do you think? Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. Deep, rich Kohler finishes bring a whole new dimension to faucet design and vibrant finish for life adds durable luster. Create a look that's all your own, from pure and elegant polished chrome to the sophisticated warmth of vibrant French gold. Mix textures or opt for color finish accents for the best of both worlds. Consider updating every faucet in the house. So many beautiful options to offer endless possibilities. See all the choices at the beautiful showroom of Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. This is Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. I've sold Lennox furnaces and air conditioners for almost 40 years and wouldn't even dream of selling another line. When you find something good, you stick with it. And Lennox is the best of the best. A manufacturer that others try to keep up with. In business for 115 years, Lennox has invented most of the significant products in the world of furnaces and air conditioners. Things like the very first forced air furnace to have a blower on it. The very first 90% efficient furnace the first two-speed air conditioner compressor, and the list goes on and on. And Lennox continues to set energy efficiency records that other manufacturers try to keep up with. Basically, the rest of the industry fights to keep up with Lennox's new innovations. They really are the best of the best. Lennox, installed by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. This, this is KMBZ. And we're back. Man, it's hot out there. Oh, golly. Yesterday, I, I've got all kinds of projects at my house. And what I do, I work on most of them on Saturdays. And and so some of the projects are outside. I, I looked at the temperature. Well, I don't remember what the temperature was, you know, when I finally got around. I mean, even at 8 o'clock in the morning, I think it was like, already 83 degrees out and i said oh man i gotta find something to do inside so anyway I, my uh my, the motorcycle i rode up to canada a few weeks ago it's due for an oil change because all the miles i put on it and i said you know i've i've had a uh, high output alternator for it you know, for almost a year god i shouldn't admit stuff like this i put it put off putting the high output alternator on this motorcycle for almost a year now and i said you know today would be a good i uh, good day to do that i'm gonna have to drain the oil out of the primary case and change that anyway might as well just go ahead and pull the primary cover off and do that work and and if i do that i can I can work most of the day in my air conditioned shop and not have to go outside and sweat. So that's what I did anyway. And I, and I got it pretty much done too. I got the hard parts of it done. So anyway, I'm going to have a high output alternator so that 
if I go, the reason I'm putting it on there, if I go riding when it's really cold out, I've got heated gear. But I, my alternator on my motorcycle wasn't big enough to run two sets of heated gear, so I would have to make a choice between do I wear the heated gear or does my girlfriend wear the heated gear? Now, that's assuming that I am able to find a girlfriend, I mean. But I, I just... Oh, and, and you know, who wins an argument like that? I'd be riding with the unheated gear, I think. So anyway, oh, I better shut up. We're going to get back. We're going to get to the phones here, and we're going to start with, uh, golly, is, I don't know how to pronounce this name. I'm not going to say. Raja? Okay. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it, I, sh- I should believe Robert when he puts these names up here. <laughs> what can I help you with, Raja? Well, I am um, working on a project. I just, you know, bought a house. It's a fixer-upper. And I've been getting quotes to get siding done and roofing done. And yeah. one of them is like an unbelievable price. But the issue is is that it's so unbelievable that um, he asked for 10000 right up front. Uh-huh. Okay. And a friend of mine suggested, well... You need to have them do the work first and then pay them because mm-hmm. I don't want to get ripped off. So do you have any advice? Oh, you know, I don't, I mean, you shouldn't pay everything up front, but getting a deposit, I mean, that's something that we do. When, For example, when, when I, uh, I, one of the things I do a lot of is rebuilding showers, and it's an, it's an expensive job if you do it correctly and and if you use really good materials and the materials for that job uh, most of the showers that we rebuild we use a product called swanstone it's a nice solid service material but it's expensive and it's a very big percentage of the job and when we order it uh, it cannot be returned. It's coming from St. Louis, I think, and, and and it can't be returned. And so we always ask for a deposit on a shower. The materials for the Swanstone and everything turn out to be about 35% of the job, so we'll get about 35% of the total job cost up front. It's our... Oh, it, it pays for the the materials that are special ordered, and it's our insurance that, uh, you know, the customer is not going to back out on us, and we're going to get stuck holding the, uh, you know. So, you know, the, I mean, siding and roofing could very well be the same way. I mean, I wouldn't pay everything up front, but, you know, it, 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 I think it's okay to pay a deposit on a job that may have special materials ordered for it. Okay, so besides the Better Business Bureau, how do you check out the references to see if they're even legitimate? Uh, I I don't have much faith in the Better Business Bureau myself. I think what you want to talk to are people that this company has done similar work for and just, just call them and say, hey, give me the name of two or three people. Uh, you know, where you've done work similar to what you've done at my house and, and talk to them. Okay. Uh, I, I think that's the best way. I think that's better. I mean, the Better Business Bureau will tell you if they've got a bunch of people mad at them. So that that would be a good thing, too, I guess. But uh, talking to other homeowners who they have worked for, I think, is the best way to go. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks, Roger. You have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. All righty, that opens the line. If you'd like to join us, uh, we've got one open line. Our number is 576-7798. And, oh, my God, it's time for the news. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. We're going to break for the news, and we'll be right back. The most news, the most traffic, the most weather. 24-7. KMBZ. Kansas City. 31 in Kansas City. From the KMBZ Newsroom, I'm Sarah Scott. Democrat Paul Davis says his party in Kansas needs not just Democratic voters, but also independent and Republican supporters in order to win in the November elections. Davis says that his campaign to unseat Republican Governor Sam Brownback is focusing its resources on identifying those voters and getting them out to the polls for the general election. He says Democrats running for other statewide races are also seeing some significant Republican support in their campaigns. 
Not many doctors make house calls anymore, but a new study finds that bringing primary care into the homes of the frail, frail elderly saves Medicare money because it's cheaper than hospital or specialist care. The study comes from a home care program at a Washington, D.C. hospital. Researchers found that over two years, total Medicare costs were 17 percent lower for the house call patients. A larger Medicare project is underway with 17 house call programs around the country to test if their approach improves care while saving money. Now your weather forecast with KMBZ staff meteorologist Steve Hamilton. Sunny and hot through the rest of this afternoon. A heat advisory is in effect through tomorrow afternoon. Temperature in the upper 90s, our heat index 101 and breezy. 78 clear skies tonight, sunny and hot again tomorrow. High 99, heat index 104. I'm staff meteorologist Steve Hamilton, KMBZ weather. 88 at KCI, 90 downtown, 93 at your official weather station. I'm Sarah Scott. Stay connected with 98.1 FM KMBZ and KMBZ.com. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber. If you're like a lot of people and just hate your toilet because it gets plugged so frequently, and if you're at the point where you're saying, I'm sick of this, I want the best flushing toilet known to mankind, then you want a Gerber Ultra Flush Toilet. It still only uses 1.6 gallons of water per flush, but that 1.6 gallons of water is stored in the toilet tank under pressure. And when it's released, you've never seen a flush that powerful in anybody's home. It's really dramatic. Often people will put things down toilets and public restrooms that they wouldn't in their own homes, like rags or handy wipes or tampons. Or maybe you have a family member with large, firm stools. Whatever the reason, if you really want the most powerful flush available, you want a Gerber Ultra Flush Toilet. You can see the flush in the live models in my showroom, too. Gerber Power Flush Toilets, installed by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. Kohler products offer intrinsic quality born of tradition. Skills passed down through generations combined with innovative techniques and timeless design to establish the enduring character for which Kohler is known. There is no substitute for the knowing hand that sculpts the rim of a pedestal lavatory or the eye that precisely measures the thickness of enamel on red-hot Kohler cast iron as if by instinct. The experience is bold. The experience is art. This experience is the bold look of Kohler. See it all at the showroom of Dick Ray, the master plumber. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber at Shawnee Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. If you have a finished basement and a sump pump, listen very carefully. When your sump pump fails or the power goes out, you're looking at thousands of dollars in water damage. The biggest problem with all pumps except one is that the pump may be broken right now, and yet you won't know about it until it's too late. When we get that next heavy rain... Only PHCC Pro Series pumping systems have a microprocessor that continuously tests the pump, the battery, and the power supply and sounds an alarm if there's a problem before you get flooded. You spent thousands of dollars finishing your basement. You're nuts if you don't protect it with the only pumping system that tests itself constantly. PHCC Pro Series pumps Installed by Dick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. This is 98.1 FM, KMBZ. And we're back. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. That's me. Somebody told me last week they had a hard time. Uh, finding my number they wanted to call me and anyway if you google dick ray the master plumber you'll get me guaranteed or just google dick ray probably is enough anyway hey you, you know we, i was talking about bidets earlier here's something else that i've discovered and th- this may be a problem why people don't have bidets also i i've got one in my house you know i've had a bidet toilet seat for 15 years now and so when i and i it's just so neat you know i want other people to experience it too you know so i if i have a party over at my house or have a friend over i uh I, uh, you know, they say, hey, where's your toilet? I got to go use your toilet. Okay. And, and so I take them back to the bathroom that has a bidet in it. And, and I instruct them on how to use it. And I said, you're just going to love this. It is so wonderful, you know. And so after they come out, I mean, <laughs> this is what I talk about when I have a party at my house. How'd you like my bidet? <laughs> I said, how'd you, how do you like it? And, uh, and, 
nobody ever even uses a darn thing. They come out of the bathroom after I'd spent five minutes showing them, you know, how to, which button to push and all this and that. And they come out of the bathroom, they, oh, I, 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 did, I didn't use that, you know. And I think one of the problems is it's just, you know, it's not very macho or something, I guess. Or I, I don't know. P- people don't even try it, you know. It's just, I don't know, fear of the unknown. And, you know, you use the toilet and grab the toilet paper. That's the way I've always done it. It's the way Daddy did it. and That's the way I'm going to do it. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to get in trouble if I continue here. Yeah, let's see. Let's start with Bob and Lee Summit. Hi, Bob. What can I do for you? Well, I think he answered one of my questions during the commercial break. Uh, you talked about the... Um um, ultra flush toilets. Uh, yeah. we've got a couple of toilets that need to be replaced in the house, and I was wondering, um, what the cost of those are and if they can be installed on a DYI or do they have to be installed by uh, one of your uh, your technicians? If you know how to ch- how to install a toilet, you can install the power flush toilet too, because they're as far as installation goes, they're just like any other toilet. And the cost, I mean, it depends on which model you get, and if you get it without a seat. I, I, I just sold uh, Friday a, a round front toilet, and the and oh golly the. I think the man already had a seat or he was going to reuse a seat off his old toilet because toilet seats will swap between different toilets if you want to use them. We usually put a new seat on. But the, I think this toilet that I sold him, golly, oh, golly, it's about $400, something like that. And I know the one that we sell the most of, which is the... the uh, power flush toilet that has an elongated bowl and a taller seat height if we sell it with the seat it's a oh just a little over six hundred dollars something like that and it's something that you can easily install yourself if you change other toilets there's no difference between uh, installing this and any other regular toilet okay okay that's great that's too bad what about the what about the cost of the uh seat that you were talking about oh the bidet toilet seat yeah oh th- there are several different models the one that i have in my own house is the entry level and it costs oh golly it's it's under a thousand dollars it's eight hundred nine hundred dollars something like that and the one and 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 it does everything that's important. It does ha, has all the important functions. It's got an arm that sticks out from the seat, and it's got push buttons on that arm. And so when I <laughs> that that that's the only thing that I don't really like about that model. You know, I sit there on the on the toilet seat with all these buttons down at my right side, and I kind of feel like Captain Kirk on the Enterprise. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But anyway, the, the yeah. one the one that I really like and I wish that I had was the one that looked just like a regular toilet seat and the buttons are on a remote control like a TV set remote control. And it, it, it so it, it looks less Captain Kirkish or whatever you want to call that. So you're and, captain of your own toilet seat. Yeah, and it has some other benefits, too. I mean, th- there are models that go all the way up. I think the most expensive ones are a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, they have some of them that have blow dryers on them because when you get done using the bidet toilet seat, one of the things you do is take a couple of sheets of toilet paper and just dry yourself off with it, which is no big deal. Well, but, now, do, huh? do, you, do you service the entire Kansas City area, say out the Summit area? Oh, sure, sure. Okay. If you're interested, come in and ta- uh, come in. Let me know you're coming because – this is one of those products that I know better than the other people in my office just because I've got one, and I know all about it. So if you're coming out to take a look at it, call me and make sure I'm going to be there. Where, where is your showroom? Oh, we're real close to 87th and I-35 in Overland Park. Okay, great. Okay, right, well, I'll look it up, and, and we'll try and get out there one of these days real soon. Very good. Thanks for calling, Bob. Thank you. Mm, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All righty. Well, I'm getting more response this time than I usually do. 
Oh, hey, that opens up a line. If you'd like to join us, we got one open line. Grab it quick. The number, call right now, 576-7798. 576-7798. And it's ringing. That's a good thing. We like it when the lines are busy. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to talk about if nobody calls, which never has happened yet, but one of these days it will. <laughs> Oh, let's see. We've got Connie, um, Connie and Belton. Hi, Connie. What can I do for you? Hi. Um, I was wondering on those, um, you know, uh, uh, shower uh, handles that come in a set of three. You've got the hot, the cold, and the shower handle. Yes. Okay. The plastic, the clear plastic ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, on one of mine, on the hot water, it's stripped out. You know, it just it, it just takes forever to get it to turn and shut off yeah and i'm wondering um before i hire a plumber to change that all out for metal fixtures can i just get a plastic replacement and change that easily yeah yeah you sure can the the, the handle itself the is is the part that's stripped out the handle slipping on the stem uh -huh. is it okay yeah that's really easy to do uh and that's certainly something that you don't need to hire a plumber to do that, you, you there's usually a cap right in the center of the handle. You pop that cap off, and then underneath that cap is a screw. You unscrew the screw, and the handle will just pull right off. And you get a uh, you get a new handle, put it on, and tighten the screw, and you're done. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's that's an easy one. Those aren't very. I mean, it seems to me that those are kind of the low, lowest on the rung of quality. Oh, you mean the it, the faucets with three handles? Or? Well, no, the plastic. Yeah, you know, it's an old faucet, I can tell you that. Uh, those faucets that have two handles or three handles, you just don't ever see them in showers anymore. Uh, in most places, they don't meet code because the code now in most places requires you to have a faucet that if you're in the shower taking a shower and somebody flushes the toilet, you can't get scalded. They've got to have pressure balancing devices in them, which uh, you can get in a one-handle faucet, but not in a three-handle faucet. So oh. it, it's just an older faucet, but, you know, it works okay. So, and, you know, <laughs> changing a shower faucet, that, that's the hardest faucet to change. If you want to put in a more modern faucet with a uh, pressure balancing device so you don't get scalded when you're in the shower, somebody flushes the toilet or starts a load of laundry or something, uh, the faucet is inside of the wall. So you've got to cut a hole in the wall either through the tile side in the shower or if you're lucky there's a closet on the back side and you can just cut a hole in the sheetrock and do it that way but it's a it's a tougher faucet to change than a lavatory or kitchen faucet yeah well what about changing them out for for uh metal fixtures metal handles uh -huh. you may be able to get metal handles for that same faucet uh it just depends on what it is. And oh, okay. Now, another, I'll tell you another thing. The round lucite handles, uh, they strip out, but, but the metal ones do sometimes too. So. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the other thing about uh, the, the round lucite handles or round metal handles for that matter, they're harder to grasp if you have, if, as you get older, if you get arthritis, it's just harder to turn those round handles. So, yeah, I tell, when I, when I put in a new shower faucet for somebody, we just always pick out a faucet that has a lever-style handle on it. It's just easier to grab a hold of and turn, and you can yeah. turn it with your elbow. You don't have to actually grasp it with your hand to turn it. Right. Okay, thank you so much. You bet. Appreciate the call. Thanks for calling. Thank you. All righty, that opens the line. We got one open line, so grab it while it's open. The number, which you can reach me at right now, 576 7798. 576 7798. 
you know, it's today's like most days, and it's difficult to get an open line during the show. Other than first thing, when we first come on the air, all of the lines are open. That's the best time to call in. But now that we're actually taking phone calls, it, it just is difficult to get an open line during the show. We got one right now, but that's a rare opportunity pretty much. Uh, and so I realized that years ago and started giving out an invitation, which I'm getting ready to give you again right now. And this is an invitation for you to call me anytime during the week, not just during this show. I mean, this show's only on an hour a week uh, and a lot of stuff that you have questions about. It won't wait until Sunday. And then if you do try and call in on Sunday, you get a busy signal. So anyway, the invitation is for you to call me anytime during the week. If you need a little free advice on a project you're working on, you don't need to feel like you're imposing on me. You can, and you can call me uh, after 5 o'clock at night. You can call me on Saturday. You can call me on Sunday. And frankly, that's when I get most of my calls because that's when people are doing these do-it-yourself projects. I mean, they can't uh, work on something Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, because, heck, they're at work. So anyway, you call me anytime you want to. And I, I don't mind, and I'm serious about that. Nobody believes me. They all apologize when they call to ask for some free advice. You know, but in, in all honesty, a lot of the calls that I do get are from somebody that just wants me to come out and do the work for them. They either don't have the time or they don't want to give up their free time or don't want to mess around with it for whatever reason, and they'll call me to do the work. And, of course, I love that because that's, after all, how I make my living. But I'm being completely sincere when I say that I absolutely do not mind you calling, even if all you need is a little free advice on some do-it-yourself project that you're working on yourself. I am very easy to get in touch with because my normal business phone, hey, it rings straight to my cell phone after normal business hours. So really, all you have to do is remember that one number, and I'm going to give it here to I'm going to give it to you here so you can jot it down for future reference. Put it in your cell phone under, you know, plumbing and air conditioning emergencies or whatever. Anyway, the number is 913-888-0550. I make this offer in all sincerity. Don't hesitate to take me up on it. I, I give out a lot of free advice and information to a lot of people, and I do it willingly. If I didn't want to take these calls, I wouldn't give out the number. So don't hesitate to take me up on it. And once again, the number is 913-888-0550. So whether you want a little free advice on a do-it-yourself project or if you want me to come out to your home to take care of a problem, either one, the number to call is the same. And don't hesitate to call me at whatever time is convenient for you. 913-888-0550. With that, we're going to get back to the phones. We still have one open line here. If you'd like to join us, if you call me right now, you'll get in for sure. 576-7798. And with that, uh, let's talk to uh, Tom in Shawnee. Hi, Tom. What can I do for you? Hi, Ray. Hi. Um, um, I was calling. Uh, you partially answered my question. The uh, When we have someone's in the shower in the master bathroom, Mm -hmm. And someone flushes the hall toilet, you get scalded. Oh yeah. But, but if someone flushes the toilet right next to it in the in the master shower, nothing happens. Yeah, it just depends on how it's plumbed. Some people have that problem in their house, and others, when I bring it up, they say, "Huh, oh, never had that one." <laughs> wow. Anyway. Okay, and then on the B days, well, what did you say the price range is? Oh, the, the entry level, which is what I have in my own house, which does everything that you need to do, is it's under a thousand dollars. I can't, I never can. Re I'm not good at prices unless I'm looking at the price book. But it's I don't know eight or nine hundred dollars. I think something like that. And then the other models. Oh, I mean, there's two or three other models, and they go up. And you can spend a couple of thousand dollars on one if you want, but personally, okay. I think consider them a waste of money. All right. On the And then back on the other thing, you, you said there's a like an anti-scald device or something that you could install in the shower where you have that problem? On shower faucets, and this is, this is uh, I mean, we always put these in when we remodel showers or at, or at least 
we would give the customer the option of choosing that type of faucet. I mean, it, it didn't cost much more. If you have a shower faucet where you get scalded, you said you had one. Well, they make shower faucets that have in, built into the faucet a pressure balancing cartridge. And see, what happens when somebody flushes the toilet, what happens is the cold water pressure drops because they flush the toilet and so if you're in the shower taking a shower you've got the temperature adjusted just perfectly and then all of a sudden the cold water pressure drops because they flush the toilet well the hot water pressure doesn't drop it stays the same and so you end up getting less cold water more hot water you get scalded well they they make shower faucets that have a pressure balancing device in them and when the cold water pressure drops a little bit uh, that pressure balancing device drops the hot water pressure by an equal amount and so you're in the shower and and you don't get any temperature change and it's a magnificent device doesn't cost uh, that much more than a regular faucet as a matter of fact these days it's i don't i i don't even think you can buy a shower faucet that doesn't have a pressure balancing device in it anymore because most places require it in their plumbing codes well, I'm probably stuck with this one. I when I built the shower in '99, um, we put in a mowing, so if anything went wrong with it, yeah, that's a good faucet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess now the new mowings probably have that pressure balancing in. Well, them. yeah, yeah, and oh boy, you can and and in order to, it's not just a matter of putting new parts in your old faucet. Unfortunately, you have to change the valve body in the wall, and that means cut a hole in the wall or, or get inside right. of the wall enough to to remove the old faucet and put the new one in. My, my temporary fix is to cut the flow to the hall bathroom toilet. Is there anything wrong with that? Um, does, if it works, that's fine. Yeah, uh, I just close the valve to about halfway so it takes, instead of taking 30 seconds to fill, it takes a minute, and that seems to really help. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, because, yeah, because... Now, when the toilet is flushed, it's still refilling, but it's refilling at a much slower rate, and therefore you don't have the pressure drop. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, now, that's you taught me something. Why didn't oh, I think cool. of that? <laughs> All right. Well, listen, you have a great B day. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, puns. Everybody groans when you use a pun. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, that opens a line. Uh, we've got one open line. If you want to grab it, the number is 576-7798. And you're listening to Dick Ray, the Master Plumber, on the Home Improvement Hour. I'm here every Sunday from 11 to noon. But if you need to talk to me uh, you know, th through the week, cause, I mean, this show's only an hour long. If you need to talk to me through the week, don't hesitate to call me. The number is 913 888-0550. Now, that's through the week because a lot of times when I give out that number, the next thing that happens is my cell phone rings, and, of course, I can't answer it because I'm on the, on the radio. Anyway, got one open line, 576-7798. And let's see. Let's talk to Dan in Paola. He's down by where I live. I'm in Lewisburg. Hi, Dan. What can I do for you? Well, um... My mom's got a septic tank, and she's had it pumped out once, and it's backed up again, and the guy has come out and said that they need to blow the lines out, and I have no idea what that means. Oh, golly. Yeah. <laughs> Is that just a con for money? No, oh, golly. You know, it's... Yeah. A sep here's how a septic, a septic system works. And, by the way, we just did a job uh, similar to this in Paola just about a week ago. And this person uh, had, had problems with their septic system going back six months. Her dad had lived in the house, and, and actually he had died eight months before, and so we had to kind of troubleshoot out the benefit of what he knew was going on. Yeah, but it, here's how a septic system works. You flush a toilet inside of the house, and the toilet puts out liquid, and it puts out solid waste, both. And then the, to the uh, waste from...
from the toilet, exits the house, and it goes into a septic tank. And the septic tank uh, receives the solid waste and the liquid waste. Well, the solid waste stays in the septic tank, and it slowly decays. And, and But the liquid waste... That uh, flows out of the tank and into well, it goes somewhere else. And uh, the traditional septic system, it would go into a lateral field. And a lateral field is just a big word that means it's a bunch of pipes buried in the ground. The pipes have right. holes drilled in them, or they're perforated. The pipes are surrounded by gravel, and of course, around the gravel is the earth. And the idea behind a lateral field is that. Uh, the lateral field, the water that exits the tank, the, the solids stay in the septic tank, but the water and liquids that go out of the tank into the lateral field flow through the holes into the pipe, into the gravel surrounding the pipe, and then they get soaked up by the ground. The roots of the grass pick up some of it, and evaporation takes care of some of that moisture. Well, when a lateral field fails... Uh, which it sounds like what they're saying has happened to yours, uh, you pump the tank out and you got rid of all the solids, which you have to do it uh, periodically every few years. And, and so you got rid of the solids and yet you still have the problem. Well, that means that, uh, well, I mean, it could mean a lot of things. In this house that we looked at in Paola uh, a week ago, what we found was that there was a break in the pipe between the house and the tank, and then the line needed to be dug up and repaired. But if the line between the house and the tank is in good condition and water and waste is getting into the tank and the liquid is flowing into the lateral field, it could be just a case where the, where the earth is not absorbing moisture uh, like it should. And one of the reasons that might be happening is because is because the tank didn't get pumped often enough and the tank filled up with solids and the solids started flowing out into the lateral field and plugged the pores in the earth. Now, and so that's a bad thing because that means, you know, you go in there and you have to have a new lateral field. And so goodbye to about $10,000 or a bunch of money. But there, sometimes you can can oh, rejuvenate the existing lateral field by sucking the solids out of the lateral. I don't know what they do exactly. I've never seen it done, but they basically try and get the solids out of the lateral field and rejuvenate it so that it will once again absorb moisture. But I, I, it, it's never going to be as good as it initially was. But the idea is to try and save spending that $10,000 to put in a brand new lateral field. So that's a bunch of talking. Did that all make sense? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, she, oh, lives okay. up, she lives up north. and uh, I've been listening to you. Just, I try to listen to you at least probably. I usually work. Oh, my God. Time. I'm out of time here. Can you hang on and I'll talk to you off the air, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. And, uh, also, uh, Lou and John, you hang on. I'll talk to you off the air too. We're out of time. You're listening to the home improvement hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. We'll be back next Sunday. In the meantime, if you need me, give me a holler at that other number I gave you. See you next Sunday.